You have my permission. It's okay. Go ahead. Do it. You can take another route. You, you don't have to go that way. You could take a whole nother path. You could take a detour that would get you to where you want to go. So you now have my permission to swap any and all ingredients that you want to. And I'm going to show you how to take a food detour today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Boom! Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. Good to see you again. Uh, this is the weekly show for the methods, the techniques, and insights into better food and cooking. We're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern. And if you're looking through uh, some of the past videos and topics that we've covered, you can find the past videos on the archive on Facebook at facebook.com slash chef more slash videos. Go there. Oh, and there's our schedule as well. We're together three days a week if you're a lifetime member of web cooking classes. By the way, if you are tomorrow, big announcement at three o'clock tomorrow, make sure you're in our Carefree Cooks community around three o'clock because the whole transformation celebration will be celebrated. Uh, and if you want to see what I'm cooking when we're not together and have me describe how I did it, follow Chef Todd Moore on Instagram as well. This was ridiculous, okay? This thing <laughs> right here, were you with me last Saturday? Uh, when we did the, the glaze, the, the uh, soy reduction, we did a, a cold marinade, hot marinade, and a dry rub. Well, this was the result, the salmon, the miso lis miso salmon. Oh my goodness, it was so good. I served it with uh, scallion sushi rice and uh, sweet Thai chili asparagus. It really cool. So, so how do I do it? Well, I, I don't know. It must just be that I'm a carefree cook, I guess. And I wind up bringing friends and family together because I learn every time I cook. I wind up creating my own cooking style all because I practice pro methods and it make me wind up loving my cooking. Hey, everyone. <laughs> uh, what was that again? What was that last one? Create my own cooking style right there. Create my own cooking style. That's the one I want to concentrate on today. Creating your own cooking style. Let that sink in a minute. Do, do, do you have a, a cooking style? Could somebody be like, oh, I, I know Sally cook this, right? Your own cooking style. I want you to listen very carefully to this next statement because it's going to help you get there. Okay. Are you listening? Escuchamos, right? Are you ready? What you choose to eat doesn't change how cooking works, right? It's the key to cooking any ingredient for any diet or any desire. And that statement is really our topic for today. But first, I've got a what am I? Um, looks like we've got carrots, celery, onion. There's a little French flag down there in the corner. Tell me in the comments section below, what am I? French flag with three things in there. Um, look, I, I want to ask you something. If you're driving down the road, and the road is blocked, or, or there's heavy traffic, let's just say, do you just get out of your car, or walk away, <laughs> and say, well, there's no possible way to get there. I hit a roadblock, I'm never going to get there. No, you don't just leave your car on the side of the road and go buy another one. You find a way around it. You find a detour, right? But so many people are afraid to take a detour in their cooking. And it's really just the wrong way to think about cooking. What you choose to eat doesn't change how cooking works. Remember, were, were you a Scuchamos when, when I said that a little while ago? And you're just horrified by my Spanish right now. All right, look, you know I spend a lot of time thinking about how I can help people toward better cooking. It's pretty much all I do. And I've been doing this for about a dozen years now. 
my personal journey is to figure out what I can do every day to have the biggest impact and, and see how you take the information and see food and cooking differently as a different part, as maybe a more important part of your life and lifestyle. And I find that everybody is paying attention to this topic right now. Controlling your own ingredients, cooking your own food in your own home, having a pantry of items to shift and move and take food detours. This is really becoming important to everybody everywhere because it transcends borders, it transcends religion, races, anything like that. I have a personal creed, a, a, a personal creed that I repeat to myself often. It's on my desktop on my computer. Would you like to hear it? Would you like to hear my personal creed? The personal creed comes from the idea that you should have an elevator sales pitch, right? Now, since I have a sales background, I'm familiar with this. Before I changed my life entirely, I was a media salesperson. I sold radio time, billboard space, so on. Before I discarded everything and wound up going to culinary school a few decades ago, I was very familiar with this idea of an elevator pitch. And it's the idea that if you get into an elevator with someone else, heaven forbid, but, but just go with me, you get into an elevator with somebody else, the doors close, the person turns to you and says, what do you do? Would you be able to answer them within a few floors? I think everybody should have an elevator pitch. It sets your intentions. It sets who you are. You should write it down. You should say it out loud at least once a week. And you'll see how you become more confident in who you are. So maybe you look in the mirror every morning and you say, I'm a mother. I'm a grandmother. I'm a grandfather. Uh, not all three. You, you pick one. Uh, who is dedicated to helping others and making my children or grandchildren the best adults they could be. Okay, that, that's your creed. You say it in the mirror. Um, I am a, a confident person. I want to work better with my community. I want to help improve the lives of others, right? Just state it to yourself. It's really that simple. So think about it. If you got into an elevator and someone turned to you and they said, who are you? What would you say? Now, <laughs> Mine uh, was in a really tall building in downtown Baltimore, Maryland, so I would have more time because of more floors. So if somebody got in the elevator with me and they said, hey, stranger, what do you do? I would say I help amateur chefs who want to impress themselves and others by empowering them with how cooking works using the dependable and repeatable methods not taught anywhere else so they can ignore recipes and cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride. And I'll know I'm successful when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, lifestyles, and health. And then the guy's gonna be mashing a button. <laughs> Get me out of here with this guy and, and his practice pitched. But this is a little bit like the opening of the Carefree Cooks Code. I, I state my mission, right? So these are where these ideas come from. That might be a little heavy. <laughs> for, so don't ever ask me what I do in an elevator because you're going to get all that. And I've got it memorized. I say it all the time. This is where these ideas come from. From my personal mantra, my personal creed, my personal elevator pitch. But let me remind you that what you choose to eat does not change how cooking works, right? Did, were you listening? Did you, you remember this at all? Okay. So when I think about fulfilling my own mantra, helping amateur chefs and home cooks the best way I can to have the biggest impact I can and immediately change people's cooking everywhere, I came up with what I think is the most important thing for you to hear right now. And that is you have my permission to substitute the ingredients you do or don't want to eat, you do or don't have to eat, or you can't eat for any reason. Go ahead and do it. There is no fail. Okay, this is a recipe concept that you have to have the list of ingredients. And this is what holds people back from discovering new things in cooking. The whole idea that there's just one perfect way to make something, it's the basis of why I've always believed that cooking has been taught all wrong for decades. There's not just one way to cook something, just like there's no one way to drive somewhere if you have to take a detour. So. You might get a bit lost in your cooking sometimes, but you'll eventually find your way. If you see someone who's cooking chicken and you're a vegetarian, don't yell at them. 
Don't tell them they're a chicken murderer. That's not cool. Use something else. Just go your own way. If you see a vegetarian dish, don't call them a, a root muncher or something <laughs> disparaging. If you love chicken, just throw some chicken in there and go on your way. It's okay. You're allowed. Don't make fun of what other people eat. And it's amazing to me when I get those few people that comment on my videos and they say, well, I would take your classes if you just didn't cook chicken. Or they tell me that my recipe looks good, but they don't like Brussels sprouts. Well, I say to them, use cauliflower, right? And, and people often ask what to substitute for wine in cooking. I, I don't drink wine. What do you substitute for wine? Anything. Any f liquid you like to pour in your mouth, short of water. And if it turns out bad, you know what? You probably won't do it again. Chef Todd, what if I don't have lentils? How about using beans or rice? Chef Todd, what's the best way to cook? <clears throat> Every day. Every day I get the best way to cook question. And honestly, the best way for, for me to cook chicken is on the beach in Hawaii. But that might not be possible right now, and it could be kind of expensive. The best way to cook anything is the best way that's best for you. That's the idea. I am so often asked if I have any vegan, keto, diabetic, low-carb, gluten-free, low-salt classes. And you know what the answer is? Uh, yeah, I do. I have all of them because what you choose to eat doesn't change how cooking works. I have a single curriculum of 48 lessons and a bunch of bonus videos that are vegan, keto, diabetic, low carb, gluten free, and low salt classes, provided that you don't use those ingredients, right? Because, are you ready? What you choose to eat doesn't change how cooking works. Now, you should always consult with your doctor, your dietitian, your nutritionist for your specific diet goals. I'm none of those people. But for talk to them about what you should be eating, but then come to me and our community for how to cook it. I don't tell you what to eat, but I sure can tell you how to cook it because um, what you choose to eat doesn't change how cooking works. So you get it? You have my permission to change any and all ingredients in a meal. Stop asking me if you don't like soy sauce, can you make a soy reduction? No, <laughs> you have to make a something else reduction, right? Use the method that you see and then be creative in your food. So let me give you some food detours that you can take if you have to. And this is all based on the questions and the comments that I get all week long, which are becoming a very long list every morning now. So quickly, let me answer everybody's can I question today. First, proteins. I can't think of an instant that you wouldn't be able to substitute a similar characteristic cut of beef or chicken for fish or pork, let's say. And what I mean by a similar characteristic is that it still has to match the cooking method you're planning to use. You can't substitute a thin chicken breast that you were about to saute for a five pound ribeye roast just because it's chicken for beef. I, th I, think that's, I think that's probably pretty obvious. You get the idea, right? Your food detour could be chicken breast for an eye round steak or a, a tenderloin steak or vice versa. If you're grilling, a heartier fish might substitute for the chicken breast, swordfish, shark, salmon steak, something cut from the round with the spine bone still in the middle. They're great on the grill. Take the same seasonings, make the same sauce, whatever it is you liked about the dish that you saw somebody else make but you hate the protein they use, change the protein and make it the way you want. It's that easy. Number one is swap protein for protein. But what about those vegetarian substitutions for animal proteins? Not as easy, right? Vegetarians are going, yeah, but you know what? No, maybe it is. <laughs> maybe, it, maybe you're th overthinking this whole thing. There is no reason that you can't make a tofu stir fry when you see me use chicken. Change the chicken broth to vegetable broth or mushroom broth or something and now it's yours. If you like falafel or chickpea cakes or black bean cakes or tempa uh, or soy products like tofu, other grains, things can be added to it. Any of these items can be substituted on the grill, in a saute pan, steamed, roasted, or even smoked just the way that you would cook chicken, beef, or pork. Think broadly, right? Two of my 
favorite non-meat proteins are paneer and avocados. And I discovered paneer many years ago when I catered an Indian wedding at my catering hall. The bride and groom requested that I had never heard of it, <laughs> but I went ahead and played with it a little bit. It's really good. It's, it's like a very firm cheese that you can cut into, into cubes and you can grill it and, and, and skewer it. Uh, it, it gets so brown and crispy on the outside, a little bit like tofu, right? I've dry rubbed paneer and spices and sauteed it in oil. It has the same effect as a chicken breast. It, it really is that easy, an easy substitution. Avocado, about the best vegetable protein source that you can get, excuse me, fruit. Avocado is a fruit with the berry in the middle, but nonetheless, high in protein. It can be sliced. It can be grilled. It can be steamed, sauteed, broiled, toasted, roasted. It's endless what you can do to an avocado. And of course you can mash it up for guacamole as well. So those substitutions, please, it is not a disadvantage to be a vegetarian just because you see everybody else cook with chicken or, or animal proteins. It, you can substitute just like looking at the other side of the mirror that a animal protein eater sees a vegetarian dish, throw some chicken in. You get the idea? All right, now let's look at the aromatics that you cook with. Some people put onions and garlic in everything, right? A lot of people can't eat onions and garlic. So here's my advice, leave it out. <laughs> don't use it at all because um, I'm not sure where I've heard this before. What you choose to eat does not change how cooking works. If you see a meal that you would like to create in your own kitchen, but it has onions in it, you needn't email me for permission. Okay. You, you just don't use the onions, right? You have my permission not to cook with onions if you don't like them or if they don't like you. I cook with a lot of bell peppers. You see me use those small, sweet bell peppers. Love them. I don't like the green ones, so I don't use them. And I'm sure that you would have my permission to change green peppers into yellow ones or red ones if you want. It's really not that big a difference. So let's talk about taking a big detour on this one, on the aromatics that you cook with and how you might change them. Because your basic mirepoix is carrot, onion, celery. And I'm not a big fan of celery, so I usually leave it out. If you don't like onions, try shallots or garlic. That might still be too much of an onion. But how about parsnips, turnips, mushrooms for something that's still white, but it's not an onion. And then it starts to become pretty much endless what you can do. If you have something that you can't eat, you need to open your mind and explore something that you do. If you've never had a parsnip or a leek, uh, you need to start playing with those because you can create your own signature mirepoix to use in every dish that uses that basic French version version that maybe you can't eat because of your diet. How about using leeks, different types of peppers, tomatoes, beets, scallions, fennel root, lotus root. There are so many other things that grow in dirt that aren't a carrot, an onion, or a celery. And if you start to explore a little bit more of international cooking and adding flavors from other countries to your repertoire, you, you, you start with aromatics that you may never have had before that put a new dimension on your cooking. And I guess I've already given away the what am I for today. All right, so the, uh, yeah, that, that was it. That was the what am I, uh, I kind of blew it. Uh, so French mirepoix, mirepoix is carrot, onion, and celery. If you wrote mirepoix in the comments, you were right, but let's play a little bit. Let's show you how this changes all over the world because in Italy, we put together garlic, onion, carrot, celery, parsley, and fennel root. Does anyone know what Italian mirepoix is called with those ingredients? Anyone in the comment section? It's called battuto. Italian mirepoix is battuto, okay? I'll, all right, I'll give you an easier one. Here's the Spanish flag in the corner down there. We're gonna take a food detour away from mirepoix because we don't like onions and garlic, uh, and we're not gonna use battuto, but this time it's olive oil, tomato, red pepper, onion, and garlic. I know I said not used, but anyway, Spanish. Anyone know what Spanish mirepoix? No carrots in there. Seven letters. Culinary students need to know this stuff. They need to know about a dozen of these so they can immediately pivot their cooking, changing any combination of aromatics to bring it to another country or, or to fit it to a specific diet. Spanish mirepoix, sofrito. 
Same thing for Latin and Mexican cuisines. And one more I'll give you. If you're in the southern U.S., if you way down the bayou, going Louisiana way, you know my idol, Justin Wilson. Uh, let me let me told you a story here. Uh, then you should know, if you're in Louisiana, what is it? Onion, celery, and green pepper, right? Low country mirepoix. It's called Holy Trinity in the southern U.S. I mean, we could go on and on. There's German Suppengrün. Suppengrün has leek, carrot, and celeriac. Uh, the Swedes do parsley root, onions, and rutabaga. There's a Polish Wolsensnia. A lot of Z's and Y's in there. Carrots, parsnips, celery, leeks, and white cabbage leaves, right? So we could go all over the world with this one, from country to country, from region to region, depending on what is grown there, depending on their climate, you know, you will get a different combination of aromatics. So I think I've made my point <laughs> that if you don't like onions, there are other ways to go. Do you know why? Sing it with me. Because what you choose to eat doesn't change how cooking works. It's so true. The last detour we're going to take is with flavor profiles, is the way that you season your dish. And this is the most obvious way to change something that you don't like the flavor or that you can't eat the spices. Like a lot of people can't eat spicy things, red pepper, pepper flakes, or they're allergic to cilantro or something. Well, if you don't like your black pepper, you don't like your red pepper, use white pepper instead. You see me use white pepper all the time. I love it. White pepper is you take a, a peppercorn, a black peppercorn, you take the black part off, the layer underneath is white. Um, cilantro is a divisive little herb. Right? People either love cilantro or hate it. Some people say it tastes like soap. If you hate cilantro, use parsley instead right? Use another leafy, use Italian parsley, curly parsley. There's got to be a dozen kinds of parsley. And then from there, you start building your spice teams. Uh, like for me, anything Italian is oregano and basil. It smells like a pizza shop. Uh, take the dish that calls for red pepper you hate and turn it into an Italian dish with the spice team. Arrange your spice cabinets, you hear me say this all the time, into the combination of spices that remind you of a style of cooking or an ethnic profile. If you love curry, put it on everything. If you hate curry, find another country's seasoning and use that instead. It's okay. You're allowed because your cooking is never going to be a straight path. <laughs> it is going to be a road where you have to turn. It is going to be a journey where you have to look at the road signs, where you have to tap the brakes, where you might have to swerve and take a detour. And your cooking may need a food detour when you encounter foods that you can't eat, don't want to eat, or just don't have in your pantry. And that's why I always wind up thinking to myself when I'm going through my pantry planning dinner, what I choose to eat doesn't have to change how my cooking works. And I start thinking about the dependable, repeatable, reliable methods that you use all the time, but you just change the protein. Just use a different aromatic, change the seasonings and make it the way that you want. And then you open up variety in your cooking. It is such a recipe concept that you have to use that list of ingredients that somebody else told you to use. If you are stuck in that realm, you're not going to find discoveries. You're not going to cook in an international flair and you're going to be stuck with limited diets and substitutions until you start opening your mind a little bit, trying new things and seeing how you can substitute for them. Got my permission as if you ever needed it. Look, I feel like this is the biggest impact I can have on as many people as possible in a half hour show. Don't worry if your pantry doesn't have the item that somebody else is telling you to cook. You should use what you do have. You should use what you do want to eat. You should use what you should be eating and cook the same way as if you didn't have it, right? So now's the time to experiment. You're a little locked up in your kitchen, right? The last year or so, now's the time to take your confidence in how to cook and apply it to any ingredient for any diet or any desire and arrive at something brand new because now, now is the time that there are no failures. You have my permission. Nothing is a failure. There are only lessons at this point. Because um, what you choose to eat really does not change how cooking works. And if you know someone that would benefit from a new perspective on cooking, where how you cook empowers you to choose the what to cook, 
where you can be confident that it will turn out perfectly every time, please like, share, love this video, tell people about it so they can start doing the same thing as well. And if you've been struggling, if you're stuck in a rut with your food, the same meals and limited variety, oh my goodness, you are going to love this week's free class because it is all about busting out the creativity. It combines the step-by-step, -step, reliable, repeatable cooking methods with the creative ideas that can get your juices flowing. The class is called the Meal Multiplier Formula to get dinner done. And I share my six element formula for inventing meals on the fly where you get to go to your pantry, choose ingredients, match it up to the method. It's a lot of fun. You can check available class times at webcookingclasses.com slash multiply. Thanks for being with me today, everyone. Until next Tuesday at noon, this is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your cooking success. Bye, everyone.